is so cool. So this is Taco Tuesday Girl. Hey, I know her. Yeah. Um. This is not boring. Um. I agree with that. Um. My long form unedited conversation. I love it. Okay, welcome back to Insanely Chill. Thanks for joining us for another week. Today, it's just me in the great outdoors. I don't know if you can tell. You can tell if you're watching the video. If you're listening, you might hear the calming sounds of nature in the background. Um, perhaps the calming sound of a bandsaw going off about 20 feet that way. Something we didn't really plan for today. But if that happens, just treat it like a little ASMR. Bandsaw ASMR. Um, everyone knows the sound of a bandsaw in the distance is relaxing. And so treat it as such. You know, this is originally how the show, you know, when Insanely Chill was first concepted and the episodes first started, started coming out, it was this. And so I'm actually pretty excited to be doing this today, an episode of Just Me. Ryan's sitting right there. So it's not just me. But um, he'll sort of be the rubber ducky for me, you know? Just tossing kind of thoughts at him. And he's just going to sit there and react and shake his head and go like this. You know? Um, That saw is so fucking annoying, dude. (laughs) You know, we were setting up for like 45 minutes and the whole time it's quiet. We're talking, eating, and then as soon as we hit record, whatever. We're, We're rolling with the punches today, okay? Here's the thing. This is actually a pretty good representation of my life right now, I would say. This random bandsaw is that we, I can't, I don't really know what to rely on anymore. I don't know what a schedule is. I don't know what sleep, time, none of these meals, none of these things really mean anything to me anymore. It's all just sort of just a moving blob of Play-Doh where the definitions just kind of change day by day. What is lunch? What time is it at? What time is lunch at? Don't know. Don't, couldn't tell you. What time, what window do I sleep? Is, what is REM? Don't know. All these things have completely changed meanings because we have a baby that's weeks old, a new baby, and uh, what a wonderful blessing it is. Um, I guess one of the things that I hear the most I guess reading, I've been on Reddit a lot because there's a lot of newborn info on Reddit. So when you search, because you're constantly Googling shit, constantly like, oh, my baby's puke is a little bit yellow. Is that okay? That's something I just Googled, you know? And like, just Google just gives you, it's, you know, actually, if you're searching a restaurant or anything, you always put Reddit at the end to like hear what real people have to say. But newborn info specifically is really great on Reddit. So I've just been searching Reddit a lot. And I can't even remember why I started saying that. That's how, like, fucked up my brain is right now. Uh, like, what was I? Okay, everything's, it's a blessing. It's, oh, yeah, okay. This, the advice that everyone says is, like, don't, don't stress too much at the beginning because then you lose out on the amazing phase that you're in, which is, it, which is the newborn phase. Because a lot of it is incredible. You know, they just kind of sleep. You know, it, I, apparently, okay, I was talking to someone that I'm, that I'm, um, doing this company with and uh, I guess he's my business partner it's Jared Goff I don't know if you guys are kidding I'm kidding another guy and uh and I was talking with him yesterday briefly and um and I said uh I'm like it's really it's been really tough and he was like what you're in the easiest part and I was like what do you mean the easiest part he's like oh it only gets way way harder from here and I was like why would you say that why would you just like lie to me he's like how old's the kid two couple months and I'm like no a couple weeks and he's like oh you're in the best part you're in the best part I'm sorry I thought he was a couple months old you're in the best part everyone says like just try to enjoy this because they're not running around they're not crawling they're just sleeping and chilling but that's easier said than done when you don't really know when you run into an issue is basically what I'm trying to say and over the past few days it's been really rough because we ran into some feeding issues that we've now worked out and we're back in sort of the bliss of the newborn phase, which is amazing. But the last three, four days have been really fucking hard, just sort of nonstop crying. And we're like, I don't, it's just, it's just really fucking stressful when this like 
thing that you love so much that relies on you is crying and you don't know what's wrong and you just want to make him feel better and you can't and it's just it, I can't even describe like the stress and like the wear it has on you and your soul so that was the last few days but we've turned a corner and this is what I mean it just changes day by day and so I'm trying to enjoy every moment because it's such a blessing and it really is like the best thing I've ever felt I think Kelsey would say the same like the best feeling it's just it's like nothing else it's incredible um I'm not going to talk too much about the actual birth I know people are probably curious and um I'd rather like let Kelsey weigh in on that whatever she feels comfortable sharing so I'm not going to talk too much about the actual birth or or anything um I'll just I'll just leave it as you know we're just sleep deprived but loving every second of it and life is just fucking wild and we've never been more stressed but like more happy at the same time it's like a weird way I can't really describe it but it's just it's just amazing and um I just love him so much you know little little Otis he's the best and uh yeah that's just fucking awesome (laughs) this is weird doing this again by myself it's weird, but it's nice. And here's the thing. Here's the reason why I'm doing this, okay? Because this is what happens when you don't plan your paternity leave well. This is what happens. You end up shooting a fucking podcast episode from your house. This is what happens when, like, a week before you have the kid, you're like, oh, by the way, I'm going to take a bunch of time off. And people at your company are like, wait, but, no, we have, like, contracts and, like, advertisers we have to make happy. And God damn it if that's not the most important thing. The advertisers need to be happy. No, I'm kidding. The thing is, normally I wouldn't really give a fuck, but it's, you know, it's our company. We got to make sure. You know, this is like something that we've been working on for a long time. We don't want to piss off, you know, the, the people that are uh, essentially subsidizing our our content, you know? No, actually, this is a really good, like, little break. It's crazy, like, only being able to leave. We leave now and then. We're being very careful about like germs and stuff like that because you don't want the, a newborn to get sick. It's horrible. Um, so we've been very careful, but like we do go out and we do eat lunch outside and stuff like that. But other days we just won't leave and then we'll get a little bit of cabin fever. We're stuck in this fucking room together. Like um, we described it on another, on her show, but like we moved into our guest house, which is like a little bit smaller. So it's just one room basically. Sometimes we're like, we just need to get outside and do something. So this is, is actually kind of a nice break. So I'm happy to happy to do it and um, happy to make the advertisers happy. You know, if they're happy, I'm happy. That's the thing. Like everyone, you know, everyone is a cliche thing. You get, oh, you got a newborn? You getting any sleep? And you're like, you always hear that shit before you have kids. You're like, how hard could it really fucking be? And then you and then you're like, oh, no, you don't sleep. It's fucking crazy because you're waking up every three hours in the night. But then when you do sleep, you'll hear him make like a weird sound. You're just always alert, you know? You'll hear them go... Like, they make the most fucked up sounds, too. Like, just... Like, it's like they're trying to make you think that they're suffocating or something. Like, literally, like, there's... And you're like, oh, what the fuck was that? You know, that's not even a cry. It's like a wheeze. And you're like, what? Oh, my God. I've never heard that. Was that an animal? Like, what the fuck? Did an animal jump... Did an animal break inside and jump into the thing and is, like, pecking his eyes out or something? What is that? And so you run over there, and he's just perfectly asleep, like a little angel. And you're like, oh, okay. You wipe a little spit up off. That's actually the scariest thing is they spit up in their sleep. And the safest way that everyone tells you safe sleep is have them sleep on their back, and they should be swaddled or something. That's the safest way. So they throw up on their back, and they have their like gag reflex is built so that they don't choke on it. But it looks like they do. So they'll, they'll sit in there on their back and they'll spit up and they'll like, eh. and they'll like won't breathe for a while they'll turn all red and then they'll go eh. Eh. and it's normal it's one of the, there's like this phrase that they use it's like if it if they're turning red let them red no that's not the phrase it's like it rhymes it's like if they turn red let them let them hang if they turn blue they need you that's when they're actually having troubles breathing but on you know in every other case they just look like they're suffocating i want to stop saying that word because that's just 
I just I don't even want to think about that. Um, yeah, you can see how like fucking sporadic my mind is right now. Uh, I'm in no mental space to do a podcast, but we're gonna have fun with it. It's been ten minutes. So actually, I thought I should probably tell you what happened with the Emma episode. We posted an episode with Emma Chamberlain, our good friend, and um, obviously like one of the most requested guests ever because she was on the show originally you know like kind of right before she right as she was like blowing up on youtube she came on the show um she came to la with her mom just to do this show in the beginning so when we relaunched the show and we we're like having people on that we used to have on um obviously she was like one of the most requested and and um so i asked her to be on the show she was like yeah for sure and we had a great episode we posted it and we fucked up and we didn't send her the episode before it went up which is just standard protocol we want to make sure that all guests see the episode before it goes up so that they feel comfortable on set and they want to talk about whatever and then after the fact if they want to take something out that's fine you know and we want to make sure that that's a thing that happens um and we fucked up big time i don't know where it got lost how it fell through the cracks but uh that episode was posted without any of her team or PR reviewing it, which is a fucking huge fuck up. So we took it down right away, and now her team is reviewing, and hopefully it'll be back up eventually. Who knows? We might have lost it to the, we might have lost it to the ether. You know, um, it was a funny episode though. So I hope that I felt really fucking bad. I felt really bad. If that happened to me, I'd be fucking furious. But, um. So I totally get it. I texted her. I was like so apologetic. So yeah, I like, you know, certain like media outlets, they have you sign a release so that they don't have to do that. But we don't do that because we want the people to see the episode and be able to like, you know, alter it a little bit. I think that's the better way of doing things. So yeah, I don't know. Boring little background info there. But um, that's the reason why that episode uh is not out and hopefully it'll be out soon we'll see um but this episode what else should i talk about should i talk more about parenthood i guess one of the things i can talk about is newborn talk that's something people that's another thing people will be like get ready don't take what tiktok says don't like let it get to your head that's another piece of advice i heard is that as soon as your kid is born tiktok knows and all you're going to get is newborn content and they're going to tell you you're doing everything wrong. And you're going to be like, you're going to be freaking out. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't, what am I? I'm the worst parent in the world. That fucking happens. It's insane. As soon as we got home from the hospital, it's my entire feed now is just baby swaddle. And why you should, that, that was a, that, it's like sleep, sleep windows and fucking sleep training. And that. And you're like, fucking, ah, I'm doing everything wrong. Like yesterday, I, I saw this TikTok. A lot of it is really helpful, all right? A lot of it is great. Actually, I've learned a lot from TikTok. But then it is a social media outlet, and their entire goal is to get you to be on it for longer. So they trigger your fight or flight, you know, that part of your brain that's like fear and the bad feelings as well. They trigger those. So then you get ones that are just do this or your kid will, you know, and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm not doing that. Ah. And I remember that this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, right. I'm not supposed to be thinking too much about that stuff. Okay. You know, there is a lot of pressure. It's weird. It's like a lot of pressure to like parent perfectly. But one of the best things I've also read is like the newborn phase is just like survival. The first three months, like just get through it. And whatever however you can, you know, um, like, you know, Kelsey's parents were telling us that with their firstborn, Kelsey's brother, they used to just to get him to sleep. They used to just get in the car and drive around the neighborhood because that's the only way he would sleep is like being in his car seat, stuff like that. You know, everyone like you learn these little like quips, not quips, but like little tricks that your that your kid is. It's been a blur. I just haven't thought about filming one time. It's crazy. Like I, I don't know. I, I'm still posting a lot on YouTube because I pre-filmed a lot. But if you ask me to go in there and film a YouTube video, I don't think I'd know how to do it. Actually, it was. 
the first piece of content that I actually made and posted was on TikTok, and it was me. Did you did you see that? It was me. Ed- I like made an edit of the Ice Spice song, the fart song, and I just added a bunch of fart sound effects. And it's just like a very me thing to do. I just did it because I thought it was funny, and then I posted it, and like everyone was like, "Is this seriously the first thing you're gonna post?" Like here, I'll show. Says this this remix goes crazy. Do you want me to say something so bad? Stop playing with him, Ryan. Can you please? Think you the shit, bitch? You not even the fuck. I be moving hard. I'm breaking the heart. <laughs> this was two days ago. I was like, you're, dude, you're a dad now. You like, so I guess I still do know how to make content. All right, and good shit too. <laughs> fatherhood is doing him well <laughs> and you know what's so, so funny too i think i'm pretty sure like we were like in a rush to go because like every time we go somewhere now it's like okay we have a three hour window between feedings you know and if we don't make it home then kelsey has to like breastfeed in the car and it's just like a little bit complicated right we're not like used to it yet so it's a three hour window where we leave get somewhere do something and then go back and so if we don't act on that, like if we don't immediately, like when he's done feeding, like put him in the car seat, get him strapped in, get the diaper bag, get all the shit that we got to do because we're slow because we're new parents. We're still figuring everything out, excuse me. If we don't figure all that shit out, then we eat up a half an hour and that's half an hour of crucial time that we don't get to be wherever we were going, like, you know, said lunch or whatever, right? And so we're like in that phase where we're like, trying to you know he just finished feeding i put him in the chair and then i was like uh hold on i gotta do something real fast <laughs> can you just watch him for a sec and i sat down and i put that on my screen and i pressed pl- record and i recorded that <laughs> i did feel like a giant dick afterwards i was like i'm sorry i don't know why i had to do that now because people need to see it you know that's what's important that's what's the most important is a advertisers make sure they're happy number one important thing Number two, TikTok audience. Make sure they are pleased and make sure Ice Spice Fart Remix. Number three, make sure that's out there. Because if it's not, the world is not as good of a place. (laughs) Wait, would you hear that noise? Where'd that come from? The heavens? What the heck? Well, that's God making sales. That's what that is. Wow, I didn't think I would be able to hear the sound of yet another Shopify sale from out here in my backyard. Uh, But that's awesome news. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. And by the way, it's the sponsor of today's video. I haven't said that yet. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or fitness merch like I am, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. I love using Shopify for my online merch sales. Truly, I do. Their analytics are really helpful when it comes to sales projections, and those insights help me grow my business. They really do. I'm, I'm an analytics guy, so I'll sit and just stare at those charts all day, baby, actually. I really do. I think it's if I sc- if I swipe down right now, Shopify is one of the apps because I check it so much. Because we have another business that runs on Shopify, and it's just it's really fun, honestly. Shopify powers ten percent of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash chill, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash chill now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash chill, all lowercase. We'd like to thank Nutrafol for sponsoring today's episode. Guys, we don't have to choose between hair growth and our health. Nutrafol's drug-free, whole-body approach promotes hair growth from within. No compromises, just better hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist-recommended hair growth supplement brand, with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster-growing hair with less shedding. 
Nutrafol's hair growth supplements are physician-formulated using 100% drug-free ingredients. Their patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sex life. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol's men's hair growth supplements. Take their hair wellness quiz on Nutrafol.com slash men for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. Root causes. I like the little pun there. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code CHILL. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. That's Nutrafol.com, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men and then enter the promo code CHILL. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code CHILL. What else? Oh, oh, uh, fucking announced the 2024 win Las Vegas DJ residency. I'm sure people are curious to know uh, know my thoughts on that. I mean, it's fucking <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's for sure. I know this so much of the comments, so many of the comments are so, people just like confused. Just like, what? What? How? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Luck. Um, thrilled about it. I mean, I've said this before, but DJing is like, it's just really fun. It's awesome, and it's a really good time, and it's a fun challenge. You know, it's like performing, but it's because obviously my only um experience with performing live performance, quote unquote, before was going on stage with a mic and just talking. Right, like if I'm like with Noel, we would go on stage and it was a comedy show. We did that for a long time. And then I've also done like a handful of shows where I go to colleges and it's like a Q and a or whatever. Right. But it's always just me talking into a mic. That's what live performance to me has always been. And then DJing is just like an easier, way easier version of that where I still get the thrill of performing live because it's a special feeling that I like to feel, but it's that, and you're just backed up with music. And it's also a really fun challenge for me because Every single show I do, I try to make a new song for that show. So I'll like, you know, producing house music is is something I've been doing now for a while and I just want to get better and better at it. I find it, it reminds me a lot of programming actually. And so it scratches that part of my brain, that sort of like left and right brain hybrid where it's like you're recognizing patterns and copying, pasting cool sections and when you have a really nice arrangement in a song, it just feels good, like mathematically, if that makes any sense. It scratches that itch in my brain, but it also is a really great creative outlet. And something I can do, like if we're just sitting around and Otis is taking a nap, I'll just make a song. I love it. I fucking love it. And so every show is a, is a deadline for me to make another track that I play in the set. So the remixes that I do on SoundCloud, I'll I made those. People don't believe that, but I I do. I mean, they're not that good. It's it's not like they're amazing. And people are like, there's no way you fucking produce this. I think people just don't think that I'd take the time to actually like respect the medium. And I think that half of the comments on that post were like, not half, but like a good chunk, a handful. They're just the negative ones. So they're the ones that I remember. People will be like, uh, oh, all you need is money and connections. Oh, it's who you know, not what you know, right? And these are like budding DJs. So I I understand the frustration. I totally fucking get it. I understand that 100%. You see someone like me who's been doing it for a year and all now they have a residency and you're like, what the fuck? That's not fair. I think that that's frustrating because it can be someone that's just like, oh, this is, I'm doing this for the check. It's just the money. That's why I'm doing it. And it's easy for me because I have an audience already and I can just do it. And someone pre-records my set for me and I go up and I press play. People do that and they make money doing it. And uh, that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. I, I understand why that would be frustrating. So I, I would be, I think I would feel a little bit frustrated with myself if I did that. So I like to take the time to actually try. And obviously I've, I haven't been doing it for 10 fucking years. I know people have been grinding forever to make it in the music industry, right? But I'm not a stranger to it. I have Tiny Me Gang has hundreds of millions of streams. Not that that's a flex. I'm just saying, you know, you could think the music's bad or not. The streams are there. 
Um, and I also make a lot of EDM music myself and I practice DJing all the time. So this is something like I want to respect the medium and I want to respect the the music and I want to respect the quote unquote art form. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people that, so that's what I would say to the people that are frustrated, I guess, is, is um, A, I'm trying my best to like, I know I was kind of handed this opportunity on a silver plat- platter and I'm so fucking grateful because it's awesome. But uh, I'm doing my best to make sure that I do the most with it and uh, make you proud. Because <laughs> that's, that's who mattered. That's who matters to me is the handful of negative comments on Instagram. The advertisers, TikTok, audio, Ice Spice fans, and five negative comments on Instagram. That is the most important thing to me. No, and I think I, I also think like that criticism sometimes um, is a little bit, I think if I was like a Nepo baby or something, that would make more sense. But like I've also been working my ass off for like over 10 years to get, to get the money and the connections to do it. Like, it's not like I just had, would handed those, you know? So I think that's something that I also try to remember. It's like, oh, no, I... People that, you know, grind in their own lane and make something of themselves and then do a cookbook, for example. Like, I don't think, like, people that have work, been working in kitchens their whole life would be like, fuck you, you're not a chef. And like, oh, no, it's a passion of his. And he wants to do a cookbook. That's cool. He likes cooking. So I think this is kind of the same thing. It's like, oh, no, he likes music and he likes DJing. I know he hasn't been DJing dive bars for eight years, but um, I don't know. It's just cool. I'm fucking happy about it. I'm really stoked. And so, but uh, other people were like, wait, but didn't you just have a kid and you're moving to Las Vegas? Which I understand that too. Residency does not mean, (laughs) it means I'm doing like four shows. It doesn't mean I'm moving to, it doesn't mean I'm establishing a physical residency in Las Vegas. That's a confusing term, is it not? I used to think that. I used to be like, so, because a lot of times we're like, with like fucking Britney Spears and Celine Dion and stuff like that, it's like they do live in Vegas because they have to because they're performing every single night. So the term residency makes sense. But it's funny using it in this, like today they posted um, fucking, uh, who's Steve Angelo? Is that his name? From Swedish House Mafia? Swedish House? Why did I say that? Like, Swedish House Mafia. Um... Yeah, Steve Angelo. Steve Angelo, yeah, yeah. It's like announcing Steve Angelo 2024 residency and you swipe over and it's two dates. <laughs> You're like, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what mine is too. It was four, I think, on the on the dates. I think there's five official ones right now that you may or may not be able to buy tickets for. And then I think I'm doing a handful of opening sets too that I'm going to maybe push some next year because I don't want to be away too much. But yeah, so that's the explanation. I'm not moving to Las Vegas. I'm going to be there. A lot of the times... It's like the ideal fucking live performance gig for me because I don't have to fly across the country. It's an hour away on a flight. So you can go to the airport, fly an hour. It's door-to-door three hours. And you do the show and then you can fly out the same day and be back and not really miss anything here. So it's kind of ideal for me with a kid under the age of one, right? I don't like miss out on too much stuff. So as far as like live performances where you have to travel go, it's pretty ideal. So I'm really happy about it. I want to thank everyone at Win who made this happen. I am so appreciative and I hope to make you proud. And the audience that comes, the Ve- the Vegas patrons walking around with those big old margaritas. You know what I'm talking about? Vegas, they don't know. Vegas isn't ready, those people, you know? I hope they come to the show and I hope, are we recording? We were. In it. Oh, no. All right, we're going to take a break and check out some audio stuff. Hope, hope we, hopefully you're enjoying this. I don't know. All right, folks, we're back. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Turned out, turns out we didn't, we didn't uh, miss anything, so we're good. Um, we got all those wonderful thoughts that I had. <laughs> those, those really just really eloquent, you know, insightful things that I said. In the last 10 minutes, all of those are recorded. Thank God. I'm sure I changed some people's lives with those fucking sleep deprived thoughts um so thank god we got all those um yeah okay so what else should i talk about what um i guess i will say this the the uh the win thing happened because i did the dj video 
we did I did the show. Dylan came out. It was kind of a serendipitous kind of turn uh, sequence of events, basically. I hit Dylan up to record that video with me. I'd never met him in person before. We had talked online a little bit, and he agreed because he's the fucking nicest guy ever. Um, nothing but good things to say about that dude. He came over to my place, you know, taught me how to DJ. I DJed in college, like, for, like, two, three years, and then never did it since. So, like, I did have a little bit of experience. I knew how to beat match back then. I used CDJ 400s. Um, I would DJ frat parties and stuff. I taught myself how to beat match and then, you know, how to build a good set sort of back then. It was, like, EDM music was kind of just starting to catch on in North Carolina. So it was, like, a really fun time to, to be doing that. And then I just never did it again. So I graduated in 2012. So, you know, 11 years of not doing it. And then I pick, tried to pick it back up to teach, you know, to learn how to DJ for that video. Dylan came back. Or Dylan came in uh, through to my place, taught me how to do it on the new equipment because I had no idea there's so many more buttons now and shit like that. So I basically relearned how. And then I did that show. He was like, oh, I'll come to the show. I was like, okay, cool. And then... During the show, he was like, you want to DJ back-to-back? And I was like, that sounds like the coolest thing I could possibly imagine happening right now. This is to a person who has been to many Dylan Francis shows as a fan in college. I went to – there's a picture of me. This is actually pretty funny. When I opened for him in Vegas one time, my friend from college came to that show, and he showed me a picture of me and him at a Dylan Francis show in college. So – you can imagine that moment when he looks at me, he's like, I want to, let's DJ back to back at my first fucking real show ever. And I'm like, let's do it. And it's all recorded. It's on the second channel. If you want to go watch that. So that happened. And I think he was like, Oh, you know, Cody's not half bad at DJing. And I think he also realizes that like, you know, it's not, especially for a crowd that just wants to party. You know, if, I don't know, if you're going to a, a show for a specific genre, it's like you have to be technically a lot better than if you're just at a party and you just people want to hear good music, you know? So he invited me to play, uh, to open for him in Vegas, and I did that. I think it was one or two sets, and then did that, did a decent job, was very nervous because I wanted to like prove myself, did a decent job got to know the people at the win they brought me back for another five i think opening sets that i did last year for him so i played now there like seven times or something like that and through that got this deal because um and basically i've only played opening sets there and now they'll be like headline shows it'll be a two-hour set instead of a one-hour set and i'm gonna actually like build a real set before it was just like kind of whatever i wanted to play i would play i'll just go through my songs as i'm playing and pick the next one and now I think I'm going to try and, like, build an actual set. We'll see. Um, but that's the difference is, like, now it's, like, an actual. And, again, I don't know if this is boring people or not, but I think it's, like, good uh, background info on how the how it happened. Because, you know, you see, I'm sure, like, as I said, a lot of people were just confused. People are like, I don't even believe that this is real. And I don't, I still don't really because it's still kind of crazy. I remember I was, like, talking to Surf Mesa about his residency at that first show. Because he's been doing that for a long time, obviously, and he's an incredible producer. And uh, I remember talking to him, like, so what's it like doing, like, having a Vegas residency? That's fucking crazy. In my mind, I was kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe. It's a crazy pipe dream. Maybe. We'll see. We'll go with the flow. We'll see. Keep trying to get better and see what happens. And now we're here. So it's fucking crazy and, and uh, wild. But anyway, so I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know if that's interesting backstory or not. I just thought I would give the backstory. Um Okay, so what else do we talk about? What else? Do you, you want to know anything? You running? <laughs> Am I running? What is that? Are you still working out? Don't know. Working, give me more context. Uh, do you... You had a baby. You used to have a channel. I'm doing a joke where I don't know where, what running is because I'm a new parent and I'm not getting any sleep, all right? Seems that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a fun joke. Running, what's that? I don't know what that is. I don't do it. I don't know. It's a joke. Because my brain is silly putty, too. Smooth silly putty. Um, I I actually have been every three or four days I'll go out for a run. Because 
Kelsey's parents come and help us. Like, luckily, they've been amazing. They'll bring food, and they'll come hang out for a little bit. So when they're here, they'll be like, oh, we'll just hold him. We'll watch him. And then Kelsey gets to, you know, we get to take a shower or go for a run or do whatever. So that's been really helping. Uh, that is, we're very fortunate that that's, that that's a thing, you know. Um, I remember the first time I went for a run, I think it's, I think it was actually when maybe her parents weren't around and, you know, we were kind of in a little routine. This is before we started having the f- sort of difficulties feeding and we were in sort of a routine. So I was like, Oh, I can, I can get out right now. And the whole time I w- actually, no, no, her parents were here, but still the whole time I was just like, I hope everything's okay. Like I'm like 45 minutes away. If anyone needs my help, like I have to sprint f- home like six miles you know what I mean? I was like nervous the whole time, and I was like, "Am I? Is this what runs are now going to be?" Just it running used to be like my thing that I would do to like decompress and meditate and think about work, and now it's just like, "I hope my kids okay. I hope my kids okay. I hope everything's okay." The whole time, um, but that has that has gotten a little better, you know. Um, one thing, one other inspiring thing, I guess, like maybe if you're gonna have a kid or you're a new parent, something that, um, yeah. So if you're, if you're maybe going to have a kid soon, I'm listening. Okay. (laughs) Hey, that's a good illusion. I like that. Um, another really good little nugget is, uh, newborns are built to newborns are built to withstand new parents or something like that. It's basically like, they're less fragile than you think, you know, knock on wood. I always want to knock on wood when I'm saying this stuff, but like at the beginning, you're like so fucking scared to like do anything with them. Or like, you know, if you kind of let their head drop one time, you're like, Oh my God, they're like now they're going to have like damage forever, brain damage forever. Cause that they're more durable than you think. Yeah. Every new parent makes those mistakes. And, uh, so that was a little bit comforting, you know? Yeah. I, well, even when you were talking about a kid, laying on its back yeah same with the choking reflex all that stuff is because they're built to like you know they're like you're the you're the fuck up you know you're the one that's like uh you know like no uh he seems like he's the one with no coordination and no strength but it's actually you and he's like built to withstand you you know i like that i thought that was a little charming um so that's been nice you had a lot of those moments where just like your heart fucking flutters because you think you did something wrong uh yeah oh yeah yeah i mean like the spit up because it happens a lot and uh every baby is different that's another thing is that you know sometimes you'll search that something will happen you'll search it and half the people are like oh this happened to me times 10 and the other people are like no that's weird um so the spitting up thing he spits up a lot he's got some sort of reflux which is normal for newborns but in the beginning, it's scary because it looks like they're spitting up everything they're eating. Like, that's how much. It's, like, multiple times. And when they're only eating two ounces, <laughs> you know, they spit up five times. You're like, that's easily two ounces. It's not. The doctor's always like, it's not as much as it seems. Um, so, like, that that's scary in the beginning. You're like, oh, my God, is he getting enough food? I feel like he's just spitting everything up. Is that normal? Um, but, yeah, there are there are, like, small moments, like... You know, everyone, people tell you, the doctors say you're not supposed to co-sleep. That's a big thing is safe. You're supposed to follow safe sleep, right? Which we do. It's basically like they have to be in their bassinet by themselves, no blankets, nothing in there, swaddled on their back with nothing, you know, no ancillary shit around them. Because it decreases the odds of SIDS and suffocation and stuff like that. Again, I don't want to fucking say this. I want to stop saying that word. But, um, So that's what safe sleep is, right? But a lot of people will co-sleep, meaning that they'll... Because in the middle of the night, you'll feed them, and then you're tired, so you'll just sleep with them right beside you. And people swear by that. Doctors tell you don't do it. But people will be like, no, it's perfectly safe and stuff like that. So, you know, there have been a couple times in the middle of the night sort of where I'm like... Hold, I'm burping him or something and then I sort of hold him and I sort of like uh, doze off for just a second and I wake up I'm like oh fuck and I put him back in his bassinet you know that has happened like once or twice so there's moments like that where you're like oh fuck I'm doing everything wrong I'm fucking up but it's like totally like every you know it's just survival mode it's just get through it you know Um. so but that being said we do do the safe sleep thing we want to make sure that 
uh, we're always doing that. But again, people are like, no, that's, that's, you know, there's no need, no need to do that. Some people are like, it actually, it helped. Like it's more, you're more enjoying the newborn stage if you sleep with them beside you. Cause eventually they'll, they won't sleep in your bed and you'll miss them, you know? But I don't know. I feel like any chance we have to decrease the likelihood that something happens in the middle of the night, we should take that. So that's what we do. Um, but to each their own, I guess. Guys, we're taking another quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode. True Classic. This is a true classic. Is it? There it is. Guys, it's time to toss your old workout tees with sweat stains and holes and replace them with True Classic's ultra comfortable, stretchy activewear. Is that an activewear shirt? No, but I have them. Those are my go-to really? workout shorts. Really? Or shirts, yeah. They are. True Classic is made with stank-free, moisture-wicking technology so you can do everything in comfort. From running on the treadmill to going on a beer run, as long as you're moving, True Classic has the gear for you. They've already helped over 2 million men look great, and now you can save big while you move in 2024. For a limited time only, get 25% off when you shop now with our exclusive link at trueclassic.com chill. I know how hard it can be to find basics that actually fit well and aren't super pricey, but I love how comfortable True Classic shirts are, and most importantly, how good they look on Ryan and myself. True Classics, though, they look fantastic on me. I look very handsome. Trying to nail a Valentine's Day date? No problem. Dress for success with True Classics button-ups and chino pants that stretch to make you look good. All their shirts are made to accentuate the places the eye goes to first. Tighter in the arms and chest, but leaves the perfect amount of room in your midsection. True Classics sells premium products at an affordable price. You can get their best-selling t-shirts, hoodies, jeans, and more in three, six, and nine packs. Seriously, whatever you choose, you can't go wrong with True Classic. True Classic is so committed to their products, they even have a 100% perfect fit guarantee and easy returns. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com chill to save up to 25% off your first order. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. And we're taking another quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Mando. <clears throat> if you want to smell better naked this Valentine's Day, then you need to make the switch to Mando. Once I tried Mando, I started smelling real good. Kelsey has been complimenting me nonstop lately. And Mando has a special offer. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code and link. Use code CHILL at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. One of the best parts is that Mando is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Okay, there it is. I was waiting to... Why does it make you smell so good naked? There it is. Pits, packages, gooches, and balls, belly buttons, butt cracks, stomach folds, and feet. You name it. Kelsey looks at me. She says, your stomach folds smell really good recently. I say, that's thanks to the Mando, baby. Mando whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere, allowing you to put Mando on. Without any worry, because Mando is aluminum-free, baking soda-free, cruelty-free, dye-free, and vegan. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Use my discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code that equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code CHILL. At shopmando.com, S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. Yeah, so I guess, like, we don't really have, like, a routine or anything. Every, every day is, like, so fucking random. Just de- totally depends on him. Um, But we have had a few, like, we had a really nice moment. Like, we have, obviously, every moment is amazing, but, like, we went out for our sort of like our first like date with him, sat outside, enjoyed some sushi. And then afterwards we had a glass of wine. It was her first glass of wine and Kelsey's and, uh, her first glass of wine in fucking 10 months or whatever. So that was pretty cool. Um, that was like a nice little moment. And Otis was sleeping the whole time. It was wonderful. And, uh, the people behind us sitting also had a stroller. It's so funny. Like, like stroller and all this shit that you do now you just you know it's like when you learn a new word and then you see that word everywhere now that's my life with strollers 
we're out, and I'm like, oh, that guy's got a stroller. <laughs> How's he going to get through there? How's he going to get to the checkout till? It's like, it looks like a pretty, you know, it's like not the, the fucking, it's too thin. How's he get, oh, wow, okay. And it, what kind of bassinet he's got on that? So the, these people behind us had a stroller. I'm like, oh, they got a pretty cool stroller because in the bottom, so the top was the car seat where the kid was. Of course, they had the car seat adapter. That's something I highly recommend. The adapter for the stroller so that you can just take the car seat out of the car and snap it into the stroller so you don't have to take them out of the car seat. So they had that. I was like, nice. Know what they're doing. We have the same thing. Nice. Then they had a different bassinet on the bottom level with their dog in it. I said, look at that shit. They got the fucking, look at that shit. They got that shit figured out. So I turn around. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> what stroller is that? And they're like, oh, oh, you got a baby too. And you got a stroller. Like, yes, we do. We got a stroller too. <laughs> you know, it's a stroller. Stroller vibe, stroller talk, you know. Just connecting about strollers. And I'm like, what stroller is that? They're like, it's the hummingbird stroller. So now I'm going to get the hummingbird stroller so we can bring Chili out. Because that's another thing is Chili is fucking all being weird. And I'm sure we, we're we being weird to him now because there's this other thing that's taking 90% of our attention. So he feels totally neglected and rejected. I'm sure he does, even though we're not trying to. He's just being weird. Like, he'll – it's so sad. He'll come over and just, like, beg to be, like, scratched. And I'm like, I still love you. I'm not, like – just because we're always looking at this thing doesn't mean that we forgot you exist. And it's the most heartbreaking thing ever. Every time we leave the place, he just wants to come so bad. And he'll jump up, and he'll jump at the door and, like, just just begging us with his eyes to take him, to not leave him in there. And you just have to say no. Well, every time I'm saying no until I had this wonderful interaction and I learned about this brand new stroller with this dog bassinet. Now I'm going to get that so that we can bring him out and it's easier because the thing about him, I know everyone thinking is thinking right now, just why does he just walk? He doesn't walk. Chili does not walk. He's the only dog in the world that doesn't walk. I don't know what it, we took him to. We, we tried to train him. We took him to a school so that they could try and train him. Pro, pro, trained professionals. These, all these people do is fucking train dogs, and you pay them way too much money to train dogs. And they were like, he just doesn't walk. I don't know. He doesn't walk. We take him out, and he'll just he'll stand there. And you'll tug on the leash, and he'll just resist. Be like, no, I'm not, I'm not walking. I'm going to stand. He's a stander. So we can take him out for a stand. And we do take him out for a stands all the time. I'll take him out for a pee, a poop, and a stand. And he'll stand. And he'll walk. If he sees something, he'll run towards it. And so we'll walk around the yard or whatever. But, like, it's impossible to take him out on an actual walk. Which is so annoying to someone like me who loves to fucking walk. I'm like, I want to take you out everywhere and just enjoy this time with you. But you have to just end up you end up just carrying him. And then he's just hanging there and people are looking at you like, why are you carrying your dog? So that's the reason why I want to get this bassinet so I can put him in it because he does not walk. But he strolls, I'm sure. I'm sure he'd go in a stroller and stroll. So that we can go out for family outings, you know? It is so, a funny, that connection of like, oh, you've got a stroller. We're very new into it, yeah. as you know. And for what reason? You're just wondering about strollers and stuff like know, that? Or? I saw... I was at Heavy Handed the other day for my birthday, and I saw a guy next to us who had a six-month-old in a stroller. And I went, how old? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's... And now I'm just, like, trying to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're almost. Yeah. We're, like. Allude to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say too much. Um. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just, you're like, what brand is that? What carrier is that? Oh, he's got two, two kids. That's. It's got to be tough. I've heard that's tough. You know, I've heard that's, I've heard the second one just changes everything, you know, it, every, everything it, it, before it's like, as a, you know, as a, you know, we we're thinking about this time last year, we were driving to Palm desert for our wedding. We were both in the, we were both in the best shape of our lives. Fucking hot driving to get married. Not a single care in the world. Just two, just sexy ass people, driving, you know, driving to the desert to fucking get hitched and then we're gonna go fly to Turks and Caicos right after for a 10 day honeymoon and that was a year ago and how different life is now 
you know. I'm like, and I was training for an Ironman too during that time. And now I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'll get I'll get out for a run every week. You know, once a week I'll get out for a ten minute run. You know, no, but it's just like now, like I don't even like I've just been eating. I don't even know what I've been eating. Corn dogs and just things that you can heat up. Someone sent us corn dogs. We've been eating a lot of corn dogs. <laughs> and they're like Kelsey's favorite food. But I've been eating them all for some reason. Every time I'm like, you want a corn dog? She's like, nah. And I'm like, I'm going to have one. <laughs> She's like, you sure? You already had a couple for breakfast. How many corn dogs is too many in a, in one day? Is there a limit? You know? So, yeah, I've been eating a lot of corn dogs. This is like... Flash flashback a year ago today. Salmon. Salad. Hot. Sexy. Looking in the mirror, just being like, fucking god damn, who are you? Best shape of my life. Fast forward a year a year forward today. How many corn dogs can I physically have in one day before I have to like worry about like preservatives? Is there a limit? You know? And uh, so, other than that, my time is spent. So I wake up, and uh, we f- basically feed him, and then feed him, and then my mostly my time is spent like doing laundry and sanitizing and cleaning, <laughs> putting shit in the dishwasher, putting it in the sanitizer, going to the laundry machine, putting burp cloths in the wa- in the la- in the laundry, doing that, and then. You know, Kel- like Kelsey was spending a lot of time breastfeeding. So then like I'm doing everything else. And so then there's not a lot of time to like, w- like figure out food. So luckily like people just sent us a whole bunch of shit after we got home, like frozen food. Like a lot of people sent like frozen food and stuff like that, which is a huge help. It was awesome. So expect some of that from us <laughs> in the future if anything happens, you know. Um. Yeah, so, and that's, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, any other questions? Does he have much of a personality yet? They really they really don't do much at this stage, but eat, sleep, poop, pee, and cry. So we haven't started that's basically talking it. or? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, that stuff, that stuff will happen later. Usually it's not this soon. Some kids. <laughs> no, nobody. I'm pretty sure. I don't think that's ever happened. No, well, don't think so. Um, oh, oh, uh, fucking. So yeah. So TV. That's a big godsend right now. Also because you know between if you're feeding them or doing whatever, you can do it on the couch most of the time. Um, or even if she's pumping or whatever, do it on the couch. So we just been watching a lot of TV. Mad Men is what we're watching and we're going through it. And so this has always been my dad's favorite show for whatever reason. And we started like, it's gotten to a point where it's like a meme in my family. Like we'll talk about shows that we're watching. Cause we, you know, we're big show watchers. I guess my family, we just like a lot of the time we'll hit the group chat and we'll be like, Hey, what, what are people watching? We want to get a new show going. We just like watching shit as does everyone, you know, but it's like a point of, conversation in my family we like what talking about new shows and we like watching new shit and every time we talk about that my dad's like you gotta go you gotta watch mad men that's the best that is the best and every time we're like we fucking get it i don't want to watch seven seasons of a show that was that happened 15 years ago it sounds miserable you know it's a great show though <laughs> that's a pretty fucking good show <laughs> No, but then we started watching it, and it's not one of those shows that's good from the start. It's weird from the start. You're like, how is this one of the most highly coveted TV shows? The most highly decorated. I think it won like 9,000 Emmys. It's like one of the most decorated TV shows of all time, and the first season is just pure chauvinism. It's like 60s, just fucking dudes being dudes and treating women like shit. So the first season, you're like, how is this... How was this an award-winning TV show? I understand it's an accurate representation of what it was like back then, but it's not like breaking boundaries. It's not like making you rethink things. It's just like men treating women like shit. The first season, it's just like... The first episode, I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, is it seven seasons of this? 
not that I'm being like the fucking nice guy Reddit feminist dude. It's just it's just funny. I'm like, how is this my dad's favorite show? I should be worried. You know? <laughs> He's like, this is the good old days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, before before woke. <laughs> no, but then then you realize like the show like as the seasons progress, it gets really fucking good like season 4. That's when it gets really fucking good in my opinion. And you realize and also <clears throat> okay, here's another point. So, Sopranos, you kind of get it from the beginning, the anti-hero thing. Tony Soprano was like one of the first anti-heroes. You get it because he's so charismatic and he's so fun to watch even though he's a horrible person. You get that from the get-go. You're like, I understand why the anti-hero thing works. It's just fun to watch this guy. John Hamm, you just don't have the same feelings towards. And so he's ju- and his character Don Draper is a bad person at the beginning of the show. Like and and stays that way for se- for multiple seasons. And you're like and he's people are like, "Oh, he's good at his job." He's like, "He's not even really that good at his job." You don't really get to see that at all. Like every meeting goes poorly, it seems. So he's just a bad dude that cheats on his wife in the beginning. That's really it. And his character's not really that charismatic. But you're like, I don't know why I want to keep watching this show, but I I do I feel I feel empathetic toward empathetic towards Peggy. So I want to kind of see her. I like Joan. I want to kind of see her succeed. So you're compelled to keep watching. And then you realize like the show kind of becomes about like Don changing as a person, which is sort of, I feel like kind of rare for a character to just continue season by season, kind of like his core character traits are changing. Like one of the things was that he cheats on his wife. That's his, that is the main personality trait kind of in the, in the beginning. And now it's like starting to like, he's like not doing it anymore. And it's like, what the fuck? No. What do you mean you're going to say no to this random lady that you would have fucked in a second in season one? What do you mean? You know? So I guess the, the lesson is people do change. You know, they become better people, I guess, maybe. Um, but anyways, it is a really good show now, and it's gotten amazing, and the characters have really just come into their own, and it's fucking awesome. I understand it now, so I get it. So I want to say, Dad, I get it. And we're in season five right now, which is kind of the mo- the sort of, this is when shows start getting weird. There's always like a good show. It's like it figures itself out for three seasons. Season four is a fucking banger. You remember it forever. And then it starts getting kind of weird. It's like too self-aware. And this is kind of where it starts to get a little bit overly self-aware. Or maybe I just don't like that he stopped cheating on his wife. You know, <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. It's like Betty like goes through this like thyroid thing and have you seen the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. She goes out kinda off the deep end and he just gets you know, I don't know. I'm not gonna ruin it. I already ruined a lot of it, but I'm not gonna ruin it any anymore. So um Yeah, so that's that's been a main thing in my life. <clears throat> Burp feed pee poop. Feed, burp, pee, poop, Don Draper. Roger Sterling. Cooper. Cooper. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know his first name. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, Highly recommend watching that show. Um, What else has been going on? Anything else? Anything like online been happening? I made a new remix. I think I'm going to put it out today when this episode goes live. So you can check that out on my SoundCloud. Overnight Celebrity Twista. It's one I did for Vegas. Definitely going to play it. So let me know what you think of that. Go on my SoundCloud. Stupid Ass Beats. That's the SoundCloud. Or just search and you'll see it. So that's fun. Um... That one I made while Otis was napping. The whole thing. So, yeah. Are you still putting out your EP? Yeah. Yeah, there's some label shit going on, so we got to wait a little bit. But, And I'm still finishing songs. I have four done that aren't 
on Spotify already. Um, and they're awesome. But like one of the one of the ones that I did, the uh, the producer that I worked with on it, shout out Nick, tracked this vocal for it. That's fucking awesome. And he showed it to some people, and they want to do songs with the vocal. So now I'm kind of in like this we weird sort of like do i release it or do i wait for someone to make something better out of it i don't know which is kind of cool um and then i also have like i have a song with with weathen i have a song with disco lines i have a song with just other like really really good producers that are they're like half done so i have to like get in and finish that but like it's impossible to i can't like get away from music to imagine like you're gonna go make edm babe (laughs) <laughs> yeah if it may you know it's my job now i got a residency i'm sorry i gotta fucking i gotta do it it's my job um but yeah so yeah i guess i will say that i so i've been taking time off of tmg podcast obviously enough shooting videos this is the first work thing i've done in you know weeks um and it will be the first thing the only thing i do for weeks to come um but I'm going to be back on TMG soon digitally because I just want to be around. I was going to, I was going to ask you that after we start recording. What? I'm learning in real time. Also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, this is what happens when you plan this shit so poorly. I don't know why I didn't like, as soon as I find out she was pregnant, like start planning the paternity leave, you know, cause it's so important. I, I just didn't even, I didn't even fucking realize how much I'd a, be needed around here but c or b like want to be around you know when you were the first to none of us know none of us knew so yeah just like yeah, quote, be- well, okay, okay and I'm, I'm not i'm not saying like i thought that kelsey was going to do everything and i was just like gonna keep working i kind of like sort of my knowledge was that like for example when chad and jt came on the show for the first time or they, they were on tit and he had just had three weeks earlier they had had kids and he was there at the studio doing a show and I was like how, how's it going because we were pregnant and I was like I want to know what life is like he's like oh dude it's fucking awesome and he's twins and he was like we got the routine down I fucking wake up feed them swaddle them put them to bed and I go do my shit and I'm like oh okay so I guess that's what it's going to be no maybe for some people it is for us it was not that or maybe it was at the beginning and then it changed and then it's like it's this ever shifting thing and they also changed so much that I don't want to I really want to take as much time as I can to be here and to not miss anything and to help out and to do everything that I can so I, I just I really like being as involved as I can I'm not just saying that just to be like give me props it's more of like a, just that's why I'm not filming and thinking about this stuff as much. Um, but uh, that being said, I don't want to, obviously, the TMG show, Noel's been doing a fucking great job. And I mean, Kara Top, is that episode out? Or is that going to be? Yeah, it's out. That's, I'm so jealous of that. I was, I wish I was there so bad. But his episode with Drew and Enya, Chad and JT, fucking amazing. So he's been killing it. Very, very appreciative that he's taking that. And I'll do that when he, if he ever has a child, I'll do the same thing. But, um, you know, I don't want to go too long without popping back on. So digitally, we'll we'll do it. My studio is completely torn up right now, redoing the carpet and stuff like that. So I don't even know where I'm going to film it. But maybe we'll do this. <laughs> Remember when I- remotely, uh, like Noel will be in studio on a laptop right there. Remember when you were moving the insanely chill set and you were like, maybe I'll move it to where my new house is. And as I was driving here, I was like. Thank God. No, come on. This will be nice, dude. It's fucking 45 minutes. And it's a beautiful drive, and you know that. No, 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 but it does, it would, like, eat, like, two hours out of your day. I don't want that. Every week. Yeah, but, like, you wouldn't have to, if we did it here, I'm still, like, I would still love to, I would still love to, like, build in my garage a little studio. No, but we could have Kenny come out. We have so much going on these days that to have a missing person that's just doing nothing for two hours except driving. Okay, but take a meeting on Zoom as you're driving out here. <laughs> Produce the show. Drive back. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. 
It's probably going to happen eventually. Probably just keep it the way it is. So It's probably going to happen eventually. Actually, I don't know if I want to pay for a new set, honestly. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else that I didn't... I think people want to know maybe updates and stuff. So is there anything I didn't touch on? I mean, is, is Kelsey doing good? Yeah, she is. She's she's recovering well. I mean, they childbirth is a... Man, it's fu- I don't want to scare you, but it's fucking intense. I'm already scared. It's intense. So the recovery is no joke. Um, so, but I absolutely commend her for, um, doing what she did obviously. And she's recovering well and staying strong. So I I don't know fucking how she's doing it, but she's doing it. Childbirth is, it's just so mean to the woman. I don't want to scare anyone, but I'll, I'll just say, you know, obviously you go through something physically that is so hard. So in order to recover from that, the number one thing you need is sleep. And it's the number one thing you don't get because you have to right away start breastfeeding and stuff if that's a choice you make. If that's something you want to do. Obviously, people use formula and everything. That's fine. But like right away, if the woman wants to start breastfeeding, it's like you have to do that so you just don't get the sleep. It's just like it's like designed to be cruel, you know, almost. You're almost like it. this is just so unfair. And it's like does it have to be this way so you realize how special it is to have these children probably evolutionarily speaking probably is that way but it is fucking cruel when it comes after nine months of even when it's an easy pregnancy what i'm seeing is like it's not easy. oh yeah nine months of being pregnant and then recovering from the you know the actual physical act of giving birth and you're you're like nope now you have this thing to take care of also and so you're trying to create milk but you're stressed and you're sleep deprived yeah it's just fucking it's fucking intense so to every woman out there that does that big ups (laughs) bevo big ups childbirth big ups childbirth big up formula big up breastfeeding Uh, okay yeah so that's that so she's so yeah I say that to say she's recovering well and she's in good spirits and uh, everyone's happy and healthy and that's all we can ask for so just feel like so blessed and lucky and just trying to enjoy every moment so that's what life is like right now and uh, I guess I won't see you again for I mean yeah two weeks but I don't know when the Emma episode's going to come out, but we'll see. So, yeah. See you soon. Bye.